Today at Motive, we are speaking to creators of Tusa Art ZA. Did you take a moment to think how traffic light performers or cultural groups that perform at weddings are making a living during this harsh economic period? Well, we have David and Janice to shine a light on us about this. Thank you very much for having us on the, on your platform, first of all. Um, my name is Janice, uh, Janice Lurie. I run a small production house called Maverick Warehouse, and we've been around for a number of years mm -hmm. delivering creative solutions to clients, um, and that comes in a number of different forms. It could be a creative strategy. It could be a video production, it could be a live event production, it could be a road show, an activation, or anything where it entails a type of communication where yeah. we need to speak to internal stakeholders or external stakeholders. Now, the company was founded really on the premise that all of the processes and the details in the entertainment industry are very needed in the business world today. And um, they're exactly the same. There are processes and, and they've actually been, uh, uh, people have come up with things called design thinking. So I come from an artistic background too. I come from a performer, producer, um, stage, theater, TV production side. I have been on stage, in PR, behind the stage, behind the camera, in front of the camera wherever, and um, I'm very, very passionate about the arts in a business and corporate sector because I think that uh, human beings are whole-brained, and I think that human beings need to not only be stimulated by left-brain statistics, but the right-brained creativity and space to think and breathe is equally, if not in our day and age, more important. Yeah. So... Now we fast forward and we've been delivering lots of events and working with wonderful teams, including David Matamela and his teams uh. and, and some of the other friends that we have on our group for many years now. And we've been working with them either in a production role, in a performance role, in a choreography role, in just a creative energy role. Um, and we've brought uh, teams together to create wonderful products for our clients. And so we now fast forward into where we are today. <laughs> 2020, and the year was starting to start off as it usually does in the eventing or conferencing or creative space where things are a little slow in January. Right. We start having discussions in February, and once tax is finished, we start having real discussions. And we start looking at our busy uh, times during the year, and we start um, talking to clients about their up and pro coming projects. And once we have a little bit of, you know, uh, um, solidity around that, we then get in touch with our teams to start creating. Well, <laughs> March, <laughs> March came and the bookings that we had up until October, the tentative discussions and bookings that we had, obviously at a complete standstill. Because we are an industry that is around getting together with people and around collaborating and around being and performing in front of live audiences, whether it's in an office, a corporate venue, a conference center, a stadium, a club, a festival. Mm -hmm. These are our spaces. These are our stages. And so, of course, right now, we have n we're not allowed to go and perform on these stages. So you then see, well, how do we all have to adjust to this right. so-called what it's been what has been termed a new normal? The, the, the verdict now, <laughs> that's the new normal. It's just we have to pivot. So there is a side of our business that we are able to pivot in terms of a Maverick Warehouse business, and that is in the virtual space. The biggest heart saw is our employees, our friends, and our teams that we work with. Yes. And here you watch these teams who are not necessarily able to pivot as we're able to pivot mm -hmm. and we are all scared and and limited in that pivot but our friends and our colleagues 
that live in Alexander, Soweto, Deep Slurt, um, in the middle of central central Johannesburg. They live in a plethora of Tembisa. spaces. Tembisa. Tembisa. No. Thank you, uh, no. David. All around Joburg, all around Gauteng, and in fact, in in reaches, uh, you know, around the country. We have networks of, of specialists in their field. Now, their field is performance. <laughs> yeah. So their 10,000 hours that they've spent their lives on is on developing their ability to perform, yeah. whether it's playing a drum, yeah. a penny whistle, dancing, dancing. moving, <laughs> singing, singing. Hey. playing any kind of traditional hey. instrument. Um, these instruments, yeah. Yeah, these people do not necessarily have, first of all, the basic amenities. Yeah. And in our new world, the basic amenities start with electricity <laughs> because that enables us to power and charge our phones, mm-hmm. our technology. It then enables us to get Wi-Fi um, so that we can talk to one another through uh, tech, uh, through screens, yeah, through computers, yeah. through phones, um, and we can reach each other. And these basic amenities are not necessarily available to everybody because they come, first of all, from a cash-based uh, yeah. income uh, uh, streamline. Yeah. This is it, it is not a regular um, income source. It is. Um, it works on projects, it works on a freelance basis, and this makes it very, very difficult when at the start of the year, there wasn't small. the projects or the work yeah. <laughs> that people were relying on. So in order to build a, a kitty of cash, <laughs> well, know, that wasn't the case. The deeper you explain it, the sadder it becomes in my mind. Mm. Mm. And the serious... Yeah the situation is for these performers and maybe employees as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and this is, this is really broad. So you can think about the busker who sat at Rosebank next to the pay station, the, the guys that are sitting in at, at markets performing yeah. and dancing. You can think of the kids at the streets that are doing the pansula moves and, and are streamlined and disciplined. Yeah. And you can obviously think of the, the performers that, that tour the world, representing our country and, in terms of the traditional arts. Do it on the streets at the traffic lights, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Now there's no traffic. The, uh, the performance side where uh, you have street, there's no cash, you know, because you drive down Rivonia Road, there's people who are doing performances at the traffic lights. You drive down in Randbeck, you know, there's people who are doing performances at, uh, uh, at the traffic lights. You know, you drive towards going to Soweto, the traffic lights in town, CBD. There's people who are doing performances in traffic lights. And now everything is just stopped, dried out. And where do you get your income? Where do you make yeah. your income? You know, because yeah. everything with the art, it's everything is physical, you know. Yeah. And uh, with that, everything just stopped. I mean, January, February, we were like, 2020 is going to be great. 2020, beautiful. Whoa. And then, boom, right, you know. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask this question. With the teams that you are working with Hello? right now, how do yes. you want the initiative of TUSA Art ZA? How will it be effective? What will you provide for the artist? What sure. do you want through this initiative? Sure. Who should reach so, out to you? Okay, great. All right, I'm going to take a step back onto how TUSA Art came together. It was really just an idea on a WhatsApp group to some friends, and those yeah. friends are David Matamela, who's one of South Africa's. Uh, you see him. Uh, you see his wonderful face. Yeah. He's one of South Africa's top choreographers, and a, and is a global export. He's worked and travelled around the world, um, and worked with performers all around the world. Um, and I think we have an absolute national treasure here. 
Number yes. two is that we work with a group in Alexander called Amakono Wesinto, and we've worked with them for a number of years. These are vocalists that just make the hair on on your body just stand up because they just know how to blend and harmonize and, and make sounds that just tap into your soul. Right. Um, and they are good friends of ours and have worked with, with, with us on a number of different projects in a number of different capacities uh, Margarita and she is okay. she knows how to move her body she is originally from Bulgaria but she's been in South Africa and working with traditional artists for pretty much most of her life mm-hmm. and and she knows how to move like better than some uh, some, some you kids. know souls <laughs> caught up on this music and um, she's a super performer wow. absolutely also who has been a brand representative, uh, you know, on international shows around the world, um, mm-hmm. yeah. from performer to choreographer. These are praise singers. They, they are p- performers. They are dancers. They are choreographers. And they are our friends. Tani Modise, who who was the queen of the original drum struck show and, and is a feature and has helped build the drum cafe, locally and internationally to what it what it is with her music and her soul and her facilitation and and um facilitation of group networking uh, you know drumming networking sessions um and so these friends who we work with on a regular basis have networks right. so the original idea was to go okay let's let's start a group what are we going to call it Okay, so we went back and forth on a name. And then I think, Dave, you, you suggested Tusa Art ZA. And it sort of yes, comes together yes, as a collaboration yes. of all the other ideas. And it means and help, us all. Is, yeah. help us all. Help us all, yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, we, I mean, we all came up with uh, uh, different names and then we all voted on the names and we all, you know, and just went names. in and say, okay, let's pick up and see which one comes out, you know. And then we came up with the name uh, Chusa, help us all. You know, it's a Sutu um, uh, meaning. It's, a, it's in Sutu, but meaning help us, you yeah. know. And this is the help that we require, you know. We need to help everybody, not only me and Jenny and Temba and Supa and Margarita and Debbie, but all of us, you know, all the artists, you know. And uh, the, the funny thing is, I was sitting, uh, you know, alone and wondering, am I going to help other people? What do I do? How do I do it? I'm alone. I don't know. What do I do? do And then, luckily, uh, Janice just called me. I'm like, wow, this came at the right time, you know? (laughs) And I said, yes, yes, this beautiful initiative, uh, beautiful creativity that is going to be involved in there and beautiful bringing people together, bringing artists together to really do this and really push this as much as we can so that we are all helped, you know, we all receive the help that we need, me, you, everyone, you know, Mm, and not separate everyone, everyone, you know, because the traditional dancing, we don't want to forget about that, the dramas, we don't want to forget about them, the the freelance dancers, we don't want to yeah. forget about them. You know, the freelance choreographers, we don't want to forget about them. People who don't have companies, who don't have anything registered, who are just working by themselves and being creative and earning the little that they have and mm-hmm. doing as much as they can to make it, to stay uh, full, you know, and not mm-hmm. to stay hungry. And so this came at the right time to say, then they said, David, let's do this. You want to do this? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, uh, even when... <laughs> yes, let's do it. Let's put our hands together, our heads together, and make this happen. Right. If you were to be very, very specific, what sort of help okay, is required? Okay, so, so I think that for us the help is twofold. Um, the help is definitely uh, people, individuals have networks and we don't, we are very often afraid to use those networks or we don't know how to use those networks. Well, this, we would love to ask people, please share this among your networks. 
share the story. These traditional artists are the storytellers of South Africa. They hold our cultural heritage and they don't have the tools. So we need to share amongst our networks and pass this message along. Please donate. Yeah. Please help. Yeah. And then that would be the second is that is to is to donate where you can. If you can donate two rand, five rand, ten rand, or you have international networks, ten dollars is more than one hundred and fifty rand. That yeah. is, it, it doesn't take take very much. I mean, I've had a cousin put in yes. put in four thousand four hundred dollars. Well, that's six and a half thousand rand right there in one from one person. Yeah. That can enable us to facilitate food parcels. You know, we've we've toyed with ideas of packing food parcels, of yeah. of getting food vouchers, yeah. and and one of the biggest things that I think is at stake here is individuals' freedom of choice mm -hmm. <laughs> and individuals' dignity. That I have something that I can walk into a store and go choose. I don't know if some of the artists need electricity, they need to pay the electricity bill. Right. I don't know if they need data. I don't know if they or need a warm time. jersey yeah. Yeah. or airtime or food. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I also don't know what the main staple is in that particular home. So I would yeah. like to rather enable that person through a, a voucher of some sort, whether it is a pick and pay voucher, a checkers voucher, whatever. Or checkers whatever. or spa. spa. Yeah. To get a food voucher to be to enable that person to take their dignity and their, you know, right. hold their head up high and go to the store and, and get, a, get what they need. So ideally, we're you know as a starting, you know, people say, well, you then have to crowdfund. Great. When you crowdfund, you have to put limits on or a, a sort of goal to that crowdfunding. So at this point, we've put a goal of <laughs> three three hundred thousand rand. Right. Let's say. 300,000 rand will enable us to either reach 200 artists and give them 1,000 yes. rand each, or mm -hmm. it enables us to reach 300 artists and give them 750 rand each. Right. So, so depending on, you know, we were thought, thought we'd obviously start with our networks um, from a donation perspective, and then our networks who are in our team that are in dire straits right now that need some help? Right. And who do they know that is in their team? And so we're building these um, databases, basically, that are a database of your donors, but more specifically, a database of who is a traditional artist that is not, as David says, associated to a an organization a or a, a yeah. dance, a, a, a registered entity that that has been working as a registered entity that can claim for UIF and those those things. But the freelancers that are out there that yeah. are in dire straits. Ooh. So so I, I think that this to sum that up is twofold. Please spread the word. Please spread the word to your networks. As I said, these are storytellers yeah. of our culture. Mm -hmm. We we can't have them disappearing. <laughs> and number two is donation. Right. There is a, a Basque um, QR code that is available on the site that is available yeah. locally and internationally. You know, people, Please do yeah. share your, your platforms. Where are you found? Yes. So, great. So, at the moment, we are on Facebook under Tutor Art ZA, and we are sharing through our individual platforms, and we'll be on Instagram. Yeah, we'll be on Instagram from next week. And we'll also be under Tusa Art ZA on, on Instagram. Um, and and there you will find QR codes. You will find us watching. You can send emails. Right. Um, info at maverickwarehouse.com is a good email to send. Um, in terms of donors, we need to build this so that we can also... Um, how the donation works is that uh, donations are paid out every two weeks, I believe, through Basca. And um, so we need to build a kitty so that we yeah. can have enough to reach reach individuals. And um, and I guess the idea is not... Enough people, yes. Yeah. And then the, the long-term idea is not only to just ask for donations, we are developing, we will be developing performances. Yeah. We will be developing um, 
possibly a potential class or two where people can learn some of the, the, the beautiful arts of, of our country through dance, through drumming, through music, yeah. through performance. Um, because we have wonderful choreographers <laughs> and dancers in our in our team, and um, and we we do hope to be able to build on that story yeah. <laughs> through through giving performances and these. So hopefully people can sit at home yeah. and although they won't be able to enjoy them on the streets, will through our platform Music, somehow singing yes, performance. Yeah. I had any thoughts about. Um, cultural groups until you guys spoke about it. And we also assume that everyone is on Facebook so people are aware of some of the offers that are available virtually. We hope that people identify with this and therefore yeah. reach out to to give to give to uh, those communities yeah. and to Susana Africa yeah. <laughs> Susana <laughs> that everybody has been inundated with yeah, food. And, yeah. and it's the traditional artists you know they say I love Trevor Noah's quote he said you know people are always touting uh, you got to teach a man to fish and so he can you know they can go on and they can grow but if, if a man doesn't have a fishing rod or a pond or, or, or the ability to get to that pond then how how are they going to fish Ooh. So, I mean, I think Trevor Noah says it a lot more eloquently than I do. But um, for me, that's the big that's the big thing here. So, we don't, we don't have much, but we can offer um, basic editing services, and we can offer excitement, and we can create social media pages, and we can create logos, and hopefully, we can build the excitement and build the build our ability through our networks. Right. Um, People don't understand the fire that is within those people. And uh, with the dance, you know, the dance makes one uh, uh, blossom, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's, you become blissful, you know, when you're in that motion. You know, it's energy, you know, energy has taken over. And with that, you know, is that the love that is there, the passion that is there, the fun and the excitement that is there while a person is performing, yeah. you become out of this world you know you you become something else you are somewhere you are taken somewhere and then that's when people see the love and the joy and the happiness within that person who's performing and with this uh, Tusa Arts HSA it's exactly that showing the love you know mm. right absolutely absolutely and I think and I think that uh, for me it's definitely it's the storytelling it's the it's the fact that we are culturally passing on traditions. We are creating new traditions. We are um, creating new, new, new out of old and old out of new. And mm -hmm. and this has to continue. It's such a vital form of um, connection in in South Africa and on the continent. And and if these artists are not looked after. And then yeah, how does the tradition something. get passed along? Yeah. How do we continue this? Yes. Um, what would South Africa yeah. be without artists? What would the world be without creative people? Well, let, let's, look at, look, let's look at some of our biggest exports. Right. Let's look at that. Aside from the, 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 the products in a supply chain, let's look at some of our biggest exports are, and most well-known and well-loved exports are those in the entertainment field right we uh we have seen Ooh, the lion like last king year, for example yeah the lion king drum struck uh african footprint african um footprint. there are many many yes. many more that david can rattle off uh, i have no yeah. doubt and and that our crews I mean, also I, have I, been you, a you, part of i mean fashion look at the fact uh, the fashion industry Look at the fashion, the music industry. I mean, yeah. even the actors, you know, it's, it's, it's global. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Wow. It has the artists taken over globally. Mm -hmm. And it's you actually know? the arts that is entertaining the world and it's and changes that's gonna right be now. People like you. you can't keep still. You are such a dancer, you know. 
<laughs> you had a good spot in the beginning of this interview. <laughs> the biggest thing is that is trying to also create the platform because as you rightly say Manu it's the entertainers who are entertaining us right now and creating a lot of content right. that is out there um, either live streaming or pre-recorded and um, and are sharing their their stories and and people are continuing and adapting in this virtual space yeah. and as said as we said earlier we need yeah. to be able to try and create a platform where there aren't those tools Nobody in, you know, um, nobody necessarily, oh, I love this, I love this. It's a good soundtrack behind that, Dave, that's great. <laughs> that's um, nice. Yeah, but, you know, homes in Soweto don't have rooftops that they can even do rooftop concerts for the, for the neighborhood, the yeah. neighborhood. But, but some of our teams are doing them in, the, in our backyard. It's just reaching the immediate neighbors. So we need to provide tools and how do we provide tools well we have to feed them and be able to enable them to get data and enable them to get airtime and enable them to get electricity so that they can get on their phones yes. and charge their phones yeah. Yeah. and and create content, yeah. and, create um, content. and without worrying that my god i haven't eaten for yes. two days and there's no electricity that i can't power my phone yeah so i, I think that is the crux yeah. because then we can enable them to be in a virtual space um and and reach out to the world and and entertain and tell their stories yeah guys thank you so much for for sharing uh this vision with us we particularly in motive we love ordinary people that do extraordinary things i think that you are trusted with this idea as a collective and I want to personally wish you all the the, um, the help that you wi- that you want. And I will reach out as well to my own networks and talk about this because I I so love the sound of it. Thank you, Manu. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having us on. Thank you for reaching out and and thank you for being David's friend and our friend. And I we're, am we're your excited friend now. to be on this platform. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Thank guys. You. Thank you so much. We are looking forward to showcasing some of now uh, the online content yes, that these groups have you. created. Please call Mote for a little training on uh, for for your artists for online Brilliant. content. I will definitely offer my services to some of them. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Manny. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. David, thank, you, so thank you for the introduction to Janice. You are such wonderful <laughs> beings. Thank you. <laughs> have a good day, everybody. All Thanks right, so have much. Have a good day. Thank you so much, guys. Bye bye. Oh, yeah, the soundtrack yes. out. Woo! <laughs> taking us out. That's an outro. <laughs> bye. Thanks, Dave. Bye. <laughs> Give us a way for somebody to be able to help us, ways to work. It's a huge struggle. It's not just a platform just to raise money only, but it's also to look further, to look for tomorrow. It's also to build a platform for everybody.